Morning, church. Did anybody pass the quiz that was going with the counter? Did you did you like that? It's kind of fun, right? Awesome. Jacob said he got everyone wrong. Is that what he said? Every single question wrong? I'm just kidding. We want to, um, first of all, welcome you today and say happy Father's Day to you dads. We're glad you're here. We know there's a lot of things you could do on Sundays, but we're, uh, we're glad that you chose to worship with us. And so I want to begin with prayer, and we'll talk to our Heavenly Father. Father, today we, we begin this service acknowledging and thanking you for being involved in our lives. And we know that came at great cost. You gave up your son, Jesus, your only son, to die on a cross. And it's through that, that act of love that um, we can call you dad, call you papa, call you father. And so um, thank you for this day. Thank you that we get to uh, worship together, be together. Thank you for this church family where we we realize that our faith is a journey. And it's not always easy, but you bring us through the good things. You bring us through the hard things. And so thank you that we can uh, celebrate that today and worship you. So just uh, bless those that are here and uh, may today be a good day as we uh, worship you together. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to um, encourage you to worship with us. I'm going to tell you a really quick story since uh, we just got back from our missions trip. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for uh, just your faithfulness and remembering us. We had an amazing time, amazing group. Uh, we Sometimes God has a way of doing things where you're like, wow, okay, he was a part of all of this. He, We were one of the oldest groups. There were about 60 people at this service site. People, youth groups from churches all around. And uh, we were the oldest group there. We had the oldest high schoolers there. And our group, um, at first it was kind of like overwhelming. Okay, here we are. We're high schoolers, and we're putting up with all these middle schoolers, and they're going to get annoying and it's going to be crazy. And um, But one of the things that God did is he knew that they needed a worship team to lead them in worship. And so we had taken our guitar and our cajon. And so we were asked the whole week to, to lead the worship during the gathering when they had 60 people together. And one of the things that you're going to learn about the Native American culture is what we do here where we're sitting in rows facing a stage. They don't do that. They Everything is built in a circle. If you go to their fairgrounds and you look where they perform ceremonies and they have celebrations and powwows, um, it's built in a circle. And um, so what we did is we actually, we're not going to make you do this today, but in two weeks we might make you do this. We Every time we would lead, it wasn't a worship band in the front on stage. We were up front, but we were in a circle. And we had our whole youth group lead the worship and then the kids would all be in this circle. And when we get done worshiping, we'd hold hands and we'd pray. And so we're not going to do that today, like I said. But in a couple of weeks, we're going to let you experience that a little bit differently. And it'll be our missions team sharing testimonies and leading worship. And so make sure you're back here in a couple of weeks. We're going to start off. We're going to encourage you to stand with us. And we're going to sing a song. And you know this. It's called The Blessing.
his fame be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and their children and their children and their children may his fame be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you, 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 he is for you.
a good time to clap. Amen. Do you believe the song that we just sang? Amen. Father, again, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that um, Jesus endured the cross for us, not because we're worthy, not because we deserve it, but it's a gift. 
and it's a gift that comes by grace. And so thank you that we can be in this place today. We can worship you. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And uh, we give you permission to continue to speak to us today. So thank you. Thank you for this time of worship. And once again, we just want to say we love you, Jesus. And uh, we pray this in your name. Amen. All right, church, before you sit down, go ahead and welcome one another. We are so glad that you're here today. Good morning, church. Are we hooked up? It's on. Hello, testing. There we go. Good morning. It's good to be here with you. It's good to see you all this morning. Happy Father's Day to every father in here. Amen. Amen. We'll let people take their seats. Just know, know that I'm a little long-winded preaching, so if you got dinner plans, lunch plans, it might be extended. No, I'll be sensitive to that. those needs. Yeah, I, I just got back from Japan and, you know, preached some hours over there, but you haven't interpreted, so this should be no problem. I should be able to. <laughs> so hallelujah. It's wonderful to be here this wonderful Father's Day, 2024. Um you know, it's, it's one, one thing, thing to be a dad, dad and, and be honored on this day, but the, the real honor, the real um, glory goes to our Heavenly Father. And that's who we want to glorify this morning, and we want to share the Word of God with you. We're going to continue in the commandments, and uh, are we finishing them up this week? Yeah, this is it. We're finishing them up. So um, we're going to open up the Word of God here in a moment, but let's go to prayer first. How about that? So Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time together that we can just come together and worship you as the body of Christ. I thank you for each and everyone here. And we just lift up those that couldn't make it, Father, through ailments or family issues or problems. And Lord, we just ask that your grace, your mercy will be upon them. And we'll minister to them even in their homes or wherever they're at. Lord, we give this time to you. Um, may this be your words, not mine. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to move in this place. You're welcome in this church. This is your your church, Father, these are your people. So, Holy Spirit, we ask that you will minister the words that need to be spoken and ministered to each person here. We thank you. We give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome to be able to share with you. Uh, it's really interesting. The last time um, I was actually asked to speak on this message, this topic, 
honor your father and mother. And it was about five years ago, maybe a little bit longer, and I accepted the, the invitation from Brad, but I was running the business and everything, and it got down to the last week, and I was trying to prepare for it, and I'm writing out the sermon, and it's just not flowing. The business is slammed, and I called Brad, and I bailed, like, I think it was four or five days before Sunday. I felt bad about that, seriously, every, every Sunday since Father's Day, or not Father's Day, but that message. And uh, so... We, we asked, asked about, about preaching, preaching and, and um, it, it turned out this day worked out, out and so I related that to Brad, and he's like, oh, that's, that's cool, I don't remember that. <laughs> so, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> short-term memory, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> offend him, so <laughs> he said, there's no <laughs> offense here, like, uh, that's good. <laughs> but <laughs> I was convicted by the Holy Spirit because, you know, I was asked to preach, I accepted that invitation, and then because of life and, and my place where I was at with the Holy Spirit, wasn't very good, it wasn't very strong. And I had to step away from that. But now, praise God, God's doing something different in my life. And uh, there used to be a time when I'd have to prepare countless hours to preach the word. And um, I'd get very nervous and you know, make sure it's all written out. And then get up at like six in the morning and, and go through it again and again. And this time I didn't have to do that. I was talking, talking with, with my, my wife, Heather, Heather on the way, and she's like, be sensitive of the time. It's Father's Day. And <laughs> I'm going to be pointing. Look at, at me. I'm going to be pointing to the watch, <laughs> waving at you. <laughs> like, yes, dear. And, and I, I said, said, you know what? I don't, I don't have, have to worry, worry anymore or stress anymore because you stress enough for the both of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, God works all things out. <laughs> so, so it's good. It's good. Well, we're going to talk about honoring your father and mother and thou shall not kill. That's an interesting combination, right? <laughs> but um, we, uh, this is going to be found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 12 and 13. And I didn't prepare any slides, but just a couple pictures. The first one I, I want to show is um, this picture. This was from Father's Day, right after Father's Day, 1984. So this is the 40th anniversary of me, my sister, and six other siblings in that Volkswagen bus heading from Oregon to Arizona, and it flipped over on its top, and that car top carrier, one of the poles came down and crushed my dad's head, and he died. He died in that accident. But we serve the God who's alive, and he resurrected our dad right in front of us. Forty years ago. It could be an emotional day, <laughs> to say the least, but it's not emotional because our dad, we had 35 more years with our, our dad and 30-some with our mom. But that's not the thing that brings the emotion out, you know, missing my parents, my dad. But the thing that's going to bring the emotion out is what our Heavenly Father has done in our lives since then and in the lives around us. And that's what I want to share about honoring your father and mother today. It's, it's just a, it's an amazing thing. thing. Th this, this is, is the, in this, this verse, verse um, so, so Exodus chapter, chapter 20, verse 12 and 13, 13 it, it says, says, you shall, uh, let's, let's get, get into, into thou shall not kill first. first. I, I, I think I want to cover that one fairly quickly. I think most of us in this room don't have a problem with this commandment. Most, Most of us or all of us have, have never broken, broken this commandment, commandment. <laughs> so, so we, we can, can talk, talk about this commandment, commandment. And, um, and, and you just sum it up that thou shalt shall not kill. You know, God, God created life. Man, man and woman were made in his image. image. So, so we, we are, are his, his creation. creation. And, that's and that's what he's saying, saying is don't, don't kill each other. other. This, this is, is this is my creation. You're my people. I created you in my image. I love you. You are made in the image of God. Don't fight, fight, don't, don't kill, kill each other. But, you know, you know like, like I said, it's, it's not a problem for most of us to struggle with this type of commandment. There's, There's times when we want to strangle our spouse, I'm sure. You know, no, nope, nobody else? No, hallelujah. We are yeah, such a good, good church. church. <laughs> James, James, I'm, I'm looking, looking at you, at you and you're not even <laughs> smiling. <laughs> but there's, there's things, things that, that we can do with our words that are close to murder, that are the same. We go to the New Testament and... In John, John chapter, chapter and I'm sorry, not John. Forgive me, I was getting ahead of my notes. 
John, First John, John chapter, chapter 3, verse 15 says, Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. Oh, boy. So now suddenly we're all possibly breaking that commandment. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And that word abiding means in him right then at that moment. But our God is gracious. He, he's he's long-suffering. He will forgive you when you sin. And even if you've committed murder, God will forgive you. But you have to go to him and repent. And that's what he's saying here. Even if you, if you hate your brother, who you can see, who you know, who's made in the image of God, how can you say that you love God? We can't hate each other. We can't speak those words that will kill. Brad spoke about sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know, that saying as kids. But we know the words. They, 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 they pierce your heart. They will hurt you. They will hurt you for decades. And God desires us to love each other, to show love to each other. In the uh, book of James, it talks about how the tongue, it's a small member of the body, but it but boasts great things. This is James, James chapter 3, verse 5. It, it says, Behold how great a little fire that that tongue can kindle. But then it also talks about the tongue in James 3, verse 8. No man can tame it. It's unruly. It's evil. And it's full of deadly poison. Our tongues can kill people. We have the power in our bodies to speak death and life. And so, so when, that, when the word of God, God says, thou shalt not kill, kill we've got to take it into consideration what the words are speaking. Are we building each other up, or are we tearing each other down? Are we speaking life, or are we speaking death? And this is so important as parents, as fathers especially. We have a generation of children that do not have a father in their life. They're being raised by a single mom. And sometimes that mom is doing everything in her power to, to raise that child in a, in a godly way. But other times... They don't have the resources, and they're just so exhausted. And that poor child is so confused. God created it where a man and a woman will raise a child, and they will see that godly example. And they're coming to a point in our society where we can't even talk about this. There's people that adopt children, foster parents, that if they're Christians, they're not allowing them to have them in their family. Our nation... We have, have to be aware, aware of these, these things, things, church. We, we have, have to stand up for the truth. truth. We, we have, have to speak truth with our, with our mouth, with our lips. lips. The, the Word of God, God says, says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It'll set you free. free. How many of you want to be in bondage? bondage? I hate being in bondage. We've, We've all been there. there. It, it might be from somebody's words that they spoke over you. It might be from some sin in your life. We've been, been in bondage. bondage. I don't want to be in bondage. bondage. I want to be free. Who the sun sets, sets free is free indeed. So, a little, little bit of mini sermon on thou shalt not kill. kill. Amen? <laughs> now, now let's get, get into honor your father, father and mother. mother. What, what a day, day to do it on Father's Day. day. Um, this, this is a, a, a powerful, powerful verse. verse. It's, it's the, the first commandment, commandment first and only, that has a promise attached to it. So the, the promise, promise is, Exodus 20, 20 verse 12, honor your father and mother. mother. Why? Why, Why do, do you honor your father and mother? mother? So that so your days, days may be long upon the land which the Lord gives you. That's, That's the promise, kids. That's, That's the promise for my children. children. Carter, Carter and Henry, who aren't even listening to me. That's, That's the promise for them. them. <laughs> <laughs> honor, honor your parents. Oh, yeah, oh yeah I, I love calling you out when you're not paying attention. It's good. Honor, Honor your, your father, father and mother so, so you can, can live a long life on this earth, earth. And, and you'll be blessed, I guarantee it. it. Uh, in, in the New, New Testament, Testament, it says it like this. this. Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 6, chapter 1. Children, obey your parents. I'm looking at my kids. <laughs> in the Lord, for this is right. Verse 2 says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. Living long on the earth, a blessing from God or a commandment from God, that means so much more than just living in this life. God wants to abound. He wants you to thrive. He says, honor your father and mother. You're not only going to live in this life, but you're going to abound. You're going to be blessed. I can guarantee it because my word has spoken it. God can't go back on his word. Once it's been spoken, 
It will come to pass. His word is so powerful. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be light. People, there was no light in this world. It was darkness. No light. And God's word said, let there be light. There's light. The only way we can understand that is by turning a light switch on. But God spoke it. Let there be light in this light up here. The power of his word. There's nothing in this universe that matches it. He spoke the, 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 um, all the planets and the stars into creation just by speaking. That's how powerful our God is. And that's how powerful his word is. If you honor and you listen to his word, it'll come to pass. Your life will be blessed. And that's what God wants to do to us. He wants our life to be blessed. He doesn't want us to go through this life miserable, full of pain and suffering. He wants us to, to go with him, to walk through it with him. The, the word for honor in the Hebrew is kabod, 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 I believe, is how it's pronounced, K-A-W-B-A-D-E. Now, it, it's kind of interesting. So it's, it means to, to be heavy. So most of you kids can understand this. When the, when the word of God says, honor your father and mother, this is what it's saying. To be heavy in a negative sense, to be a burden, burdensome. How many of you kids in here can be a burden to your parents? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Every parent in here knows. <laughs> so this is in the negative sense, all right? Honor your father and mother. You're heavy upon them. But what it really means, it's talking about God's glory, his kabod, his glory. When it comes down, it's heavy. His presence is heavy. And so your children, you're not supposed to be heavy burdensome on your parents. But we're supposed to honor our father and mother like um, God's glory, his presence. It's something that's very special. And God gave us our parents to, to train us in the things that we should know in the, in the word of the God. So God, his, his word is perfect. It's been tried. It's been tested. And it always comes out truth. It always comes out to be the truth. Maybe there's people in here that don't have an example for a good earthly father or mother. You don't know how to honor your father and mother because their example was terrible. Maybe your parents have passed on and you're thinking, how do I honor my parents when they're dead? I... I when I post something on the ministry Facebook, an old picture or something, or, or some ministry that we're doing, I get a lot of comments. People say, oh, your, your parents are smiling down on you. They're so proud of you. And you, it makes you happy for a while, and you're, you're like, yeah, that, that, that's good. Praise God. But I want to tell them, like, I appreciate that, but I want to please my Father in heaven. It's about him. I don't believe my parents can look down and watch you every second of the day. When you're in heaven, you can't see sin. There's no sin in heaven. So we're not able to look down and, and watch what's happening in the earth because of all the sin. But I believe there are times where there's a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on, that are saying, yes, go, continue, press on. But... Also, I believe it's in Peter, it says one day is a thousand years in heaven, and a thousand years is as one day. So if that's the case, my parents have been gone for five and six years almost. I don't even think they've been up there for 30 minutes. <laughs> so they are not concerned with the things down here. So we must be concerned with the things of our Heavenly Father. It's not about pleasing our earthly parents. Man, when I, when I want my kids to honor me, it's not, I don't want them to, you know, buy me things. I don't want them to, um, you know, do really good in school or, or have a successful job and everything. I mean, those are, those are good things, but man, those aren't eternal things. We've got to have eternal things. 
Lay up treasures in heaven where, where the moth and, and the things won't destroy them. So all I want for my kids is eternal salvation. I want them to know the truth. I want them to see the example of the, the love of Jesus in me. But man, you look at them when they're teenagers and you think, man, there's no way they're getting this. <laughs> there's no way they're hearing this. But the word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. There's many things that I listened to my dad preach when I was a young child. And, man, it, you know, I'm sure my parents thought it was just falling on deaf ears. But God's word doesn't fall on deaf ears. It will return. It will not return void. It will accomplish what it was sent forth to accomplish. So parents, there's no greater joy in this life than just being that example for your children. Sharing the love of Jesus with them. Showing them that there's more to this life than success. The spiritual things are what we must focus on. What we must go after. I was in Japan and in just in April, and we're, we're, we're so blessed to be a part of that ministry continuing on. My parents started there in, in 1995 was their first meeting in, in Japan, and they, they, they worked those islands for almost 25 years, just shy of 25 years. And I thought with COVID, it was done. I thought the work in Japan was done. All the, the doors seemed to be closing. My connections through my dad were done. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. Nobody wanted to schedule anything. I'm like, Lord, if the work is done, I'm okay with that. But what I'm not okay with is living with the passion and the desire to be there and preach and share the gospel with them. So if it's done, I'll accept it. But you've got to remove this from my heart because it's, it's killing me. And then it opens up after COVID, and, and we go last April. I shared some of those testimonies. And then we went last October, and then we went this April just a month ago, two months ago. And God is just moving mightily, mightily. We, uh, in Okinawa, we spent the first two weeks. We were with so many different churches and families. And uh, I, I love the way... God move. I love to be a part of his works, what he's doing. I love to see it. I love to be a witness of it. I love to testify of it. Many of you probably understand that about me. <laughs> We're eyewitnesses, right? We've got to be eyewitnesses of something, so it might as well be kingdom work. And so we're in Okinawa, and, and we're, we're meeting with this family that, man, they've known my, my dad for 20-some years. They welcomed him into his home like every single year we were there. The, the, the father of this family, he started an ice cream company, and he sold ice cream around Okinawa, and he built a big house, a cafe, and he has two children, a son and a daughter. And this man, man he's just a precious brother, Wima Sensei. And uh, one of my first trips to Okinawa, we were going for like 30-some days straight, and we're eating raw fish, we're drinking seaweed soup, and we're just like, oh, Lord, help me, praying down every single meal. <laughs> and they tell me, okay, we're going to go to this man's house, and he's going to prepare a meal for us. And I'm getting all whiny and complaining in my spirit. Oh, here we go again. They're going to want to share their culture with us. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. This is my 20-some-year-old, <laughs> you know, attitude. And we get to Wemma's house, and he's got a Weber charcoal grill. And he is grilling ribeye steaks. I'm so sorry, Lord. Forgive me. I'll die. <laughs> oh, this man was so precious. Just full of the love of Jesus. Just his face shined with the love of God. Well, I find out just a few years after my dad passed away. It's okay, buddy. It'll be all right. <laughs> I found out a few, day, few years after my dad passed away, he passed away suddenly in his um, late 50s, early 60s, left his son and his daughter and his wife. His wife had suffered from anxiety and fear for many years. One of the first times my dad went over there, they brought her, him to her, their home, and his wife was in her room, locked up in her room for months, would not leave because of such anxiety and fear. My dad prayed for her, and she came out and, and started getting better. So this connection was so strong before, between that family. 
And so we're, we're visiting with them, and, and we're having a meeting with them, and, th- and before they pick us up, and, and they're going to take us prayer walking and some different things. And so they, they take us to where they make the ice cream, and the son has carried on the business. But he's telling me, he's like, look, all the equipment's it's old. My dad knew how to work on it. He always fixed it. I don't know how to fix it. It's down. It's breaking down. Will you come pray for the equipment? Yeah, why not? Our God can do all things. So we go into the, the area where they make the ice cream. We start praying, laying hands on the equipment. <laughs> In Jesus' name, function. And uh, we get done praying, and we're rejoicing. And then I ask a question. I say, when's the next time you're going to have a production run of, of ice cream? And they say, oh, we don't know. There, there, there's there an empty spot, and this machine is actually gone. It's in, in the repair shop. They don't know when it's going to be done. It could be six, eight weeks. It's going to be really expensive. We can't do anything until it's done. I'm like, oh, we need to pray. We need to pray for that machine right now. We need to pray for the people repairing it. And the words just came to my mind, let it be inexpensive and quick repair, and they will not cheat you. And so we come together, and we start praying. We pray in those words. We declare it. And we get done, and we feel victory, and we leave, and they take us to a salvage yard, a junkyard to pray. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so now we're praying at a salvage yard. I pray for an ice cream machine, and then I'm praying for junk cars. <laughs> the, the salvage yard had a precious lady who um, had a daughter who had disabilities. She passed away recently. And at the salvage yard, they have a building that she has a vision to bring in the adults with disabilities. I'm like, wow, we can pray for that. So we're praying, we're blessing them. We get done, we're in the car. And I see uh, Wima's son, Ibuki, I-B-U-K-I, Ibuki-san, Ibuki-san. I see him on the phone, and he's talking on the phone, and he's getting excited, and he comes over to call her afterwards. He's like, hey, that was a repair shop. This is like less than two hours after we prayed for the machine. That was a repair shop. It's done. It's done. It's fixed. They fixed it. (laughs) They delivered it the next day. Like, wow, God, wow. Only you. Don't limit him. Don't limit him in anything. Everything with all prayer and supplication, everything. Bring your request before your Heavenly Father. He can't fix it if you don't ask. (laughs) We know that as parents. If your kid wants something, if they desire something, they ain't going to get it unless they ask. And then if they ask, most of the time it's, well, you're asking amiss, son. That is wrong motives. (laughs) But we, we know our God wants to provide for us. We were going every single day in, in Okinawa. Every day we're at a different church. We preached in 10 different churches and um, 10 days of ministry. And the other two days, the other two Mondays, we were at people's homes visiting them and, and praying for them and ministering to them. We visited a home where they're telling us this lady just lost her son to suicide. Not too long ago, that son that committed suicide, his mom committed suicide. And before that, their grandmother committed suicide. We're going to a house where three generations of suicide. Oh, that's heavy. That's heavy, Lord. We need your presence. We need your glory. What do you say to them? Just tell them I love them. That's it. So we go there. We pray for them. Tell them we're sorry. Know that Jesus loves you. He has a plan for your life. He came to give life in abundance. Please know that. We're praying to break that curse off their lives. That's not normal. That's not normal. That's not anything of God. That's the devil who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Generational family lines wiped out. That's what we deal with all over Japan. It's that same samurai spirit. And I forget what the term is, but hundreds, if not over a thousand years ago, they basically commit hairy carry. They would kill them, sepulcher, sep- something like that. Anybody know the word? Seppuku, thank you. They have a special knife for it. They pass this knife on to generations. So we go over there, we share the love of Jesus, we say, no, no, God gave his life, he gave so much so you can have life, you can have hope. Visited with another family, and it was a Monday, I think it was, Monday or Tuesday, so we didn't have a church service. We went to this family's home. We had visited them last year, Doug Suter and I, and uh, we walk in, and there's a group of people, and we're, we're, we're not sure what we're doing there. We think we're just going to pray for the family, 
and um, they begin to tell us, hey, last time you were here, you know, you prayed for one of our children to come to know the Lord, and one of them came to know the Lord, so we're rejoicing, hallelujah. And there's this man there that was drunk, and he's like, ah, and he spoke some English, so that made it real fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been to America. Yeah, I love America. I love you. This is that. And my interpreter's getting very Japanese scared. So, you know, Minnesota nice. You ever heard that term? Minnesota nice. Well, Japanese nice is at a whole nother level. <laughs> you don't offend the, you know, they're, they're very, um, they don't want to offend anybody. So our interpreter's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, Yumiko, it's okay. Didn't you listen to what my dad taught the, 15 years you were with him, we remit that sin. We don't hold on to it. I'm not going to hold on to that drunkenness. I'm not going to retain it. John 20, 23, remit it. Don't retain it. It's like, oh, but, but I can't even interpret some of the things he's saying. I'm like, Yumiko, it's okay. And we're praying for him. We're just praying for him. Lord, pour out your goodness upon him, your goodness that leads to repentance. Draw him to you. The word of God says no one comes to the Father except the Spirit draws them. Holy Spirit, draw him to you, draw him to you. And so we're talking, and my interpreter's just like, oh, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. And so we get to a point where they got some food out, and they, they bring out these little booklets, and they're like, oh, we're going to sing some hymnals. We're like, oh, okay, great. So we still don't know what we're doing, if we're just going to sing some hymnals or pray for some people. But a few nights prior to that, I was up for a couple hours, and I was reading the Word of God, and I came across a, a, a scripture in Ezekiel, I think it was, that said, cast the idols away from your heart. And so uh, in the middle of the night, I'm just reading and, and pondering and writing notes down. And so we start singing hymnals. They open up, and, and the drunk man's like, oh, amazing grace, amazing grace. He, he knew amazing grace. <laughs> so we start singing amazing grace, and he's like, amazing grace. <laughs> ah, <it's me." laughs> And this guy's like drunk. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock in the morning, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was the other key detail. And so we get done singing Amazing Grace, the only one they had in English, and we start singing some others. And we get done singing some songs, and they say, okay, time to preach. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Good thing I don't have to be nervous about this, I guess. <laughs> I say, Doug, do you have anything? He's like, yeah, I got a few words. So Doug starts sharing, and he gets done, and then I start sharing about casting away the idols. And this man is sitting like this, and he's just staring at us. And we just start preaching the love of God to him start preaching about how Jesus loves us, how he wants us to take the idols out of our life and cast them away. And the man's just sitting there like that. <laughs> and I say, I get done sharing, I say, is there anybody in this room that wants to cast the idols away from your heart and bring, let Jesus in? And I kid you not, he jumps up and he runs in front of me, kneels down in front of me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we let him in a prayer prayer of salvation. <laughs> That's the things that honor my Father in heaven. That's what I desire for us as believers as a church to do is to share the love of Jesus. Fruit that will remain, right? I think it's John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and anointed you that you should bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. Look at that. He says you, one, two, three, four, Four or five times in that verse. He's talking to the church. He wants us to bring forth fruit that will remain. This mission trip, there's going to be generations changed because of your obedience and your sacrifice. There's going to be lives that are changed for generations to come because some little child or some adult or some teenager heard the love, saw the love of Jesus through you wow, I've never seen that before. This is real. I want this. I want more of this. That's all of our job. That's all of our responsibility. When we have responsibilities in life, sometimes we think, ugh, they're annoying. You know, job responsibilities aren't fun and, and just different responsibilities that we have in parenting. That's not fun, but 
man, godly, godly responsibilities are fun because of the fruit that comes from them. Oh, it's awesome. Most of the churches in the Tokyo area, we, we, we spent the last weekend in Tokyo, and we, we were sharing at this church for three days, and every single day, multiple people would come up to me, show me a picture that they have of my dad. Some of the pictures were 20 years old. And they say, I heard your dad speak 20 years ago. I heard him speak this time. It impacted my life. He prayed over me, spoke over me. I kid you not, every single church, three to five people coming up to me afterwards, showing me pictures. One lady showed me a picture from when I was with my dad. <laughs> wow, God, this was in the year 2000. This is 24 years ago. Fruit that shall remain. This is our job, church. This is what we get to be a part of. Earlier I was talking about if you have a parent, mom or dad, that weren't in your life, that didn't give you a godly example of being able to honor them. The only advice I can give you is you have a father in heaven. He's the one to honor. He is the one to honor. Matthew 12, verse 50 says, Whosoever, whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother. That doesn't leave anybody out. We all have a Father in heaven who desires what's best for us. And like parents desire their children to be good, to be honorable, to listen, because we want what's best for them. It's the same thing with our Father in Heaven. He wants what's best for us. I've been working in Guatemala for three years now. A couple times a year, Heather and I were there in March. Um, awesome time, awesome time in March. We were able to just witness so many wonderful testimonies and see salvation, deliverance. It was an amazing trip. My first trip was in January of 21. And the Lord called me sovereignly go to Guatemala. And um, I went and connected with the Lopez brothers. Okay, so there's Hector, Juan, who's there as a pastor, and then Hector and Cesar are here in the United States, in Omaha. After that first trip, in, in Guatemala, I was in Guatemala, I was posting pictures of being in Guatemala. Caesar and his wife Angelica saw some of the posts on Facebook. And his wife makes the comment something along the lines of, this American is sacrificing away from his family, going to our country. Why aren't we, what are we doing here? And Caesar shared that with me some three years ago. And I got back from that trip, and I'm sharing with them all those mighty things God did, and they're getting excited. And he says, brother, God has called us back to Guatemala. We're going to go. And I said, brother, I'll support you. Let's go. Let's go. It's like at the end of the summer, he has four children, four children in America, ages, I think, 11 down to two. After the school year, we're going. So that was 2021. School year comes and goes, doesn't go. 2022, same thing. Says he's going, school year ends, doesn't go. 2023, same thing. So this year when he told me, okay, brother, I believe it. It's just, okay. You get to the point where you hear the same thing over and over and no action, it's hard to believe. Calls me up and he says, I booked the tickets for my family. They're leaving Sunday today. Please pray. I'm scared. I'm like, brother, you know God's called you to do this. We've got to go. We've got to go. He's sending his family ahead of him. He's staying back to finalize things with their, their life here, try and earn some more money. But they, they, they got a house rented there. They got a vehicle. This is them Friday at my office. They're praying for him. 
Caesar, Angelica, and the four children. His family said, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why would you go? Why would you leave America? People give their lives to come over here. Why? Don't do it. Your kids are young. It's dangerous. Don't do it. His own family saying, no, no, no. I'm saying, yes, yes, yes. God's called you to it. Do it. You're going to be miserable if you don't. Your life is nothing here without him. If you're not walking in his will, you're getting nothing out of this life. I mean, the poor guy's been driving the same pickup truck since he bought it from me like eight years ago. It had, it was Mike's old truck. Back then it had like 180,000 miles on it. It has over close to 400,000 miles. The wheels have fallen off this thing. God has blessed it where it's still running, but <laughs> they have nothing to show for it. The Word of God talks about how money grows wings and flies away. How you have bags that have holes in them and your money's falling out. That's what's happening when you're not honoring God. He can't bless you. It's his word. He can't go against it. So we pray for him. He says, please pray for my oldest son. That's one on the right smiling bigger. We pray for him. He's a preacher. Lay hands on him. Start praying for him. See him with a flaming sword in his hand. I'm like, whoa, you're going to be a warrior, brother. He's just grinning ear to ear. I get a text message 4 a.m. today. I didn't notice it until 6. They fly. They left the airport, same as us, when we went to Guatemala at 5 a.m. So he had to be there at 3 a.m. I get a text message. I need your help, brother. I want to give up. Send him a text message. I rebuke that lying, deceiving spirit in the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. 1 John 4.4, 4, you, are, you are of God's little children and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Fear or faith will control your life. The choice is up to you, brother. Get on the phone, call him. How you doing? Brother, I was at the airport at 3 a.m., know if I could let him go. I wanted to call him back. I wanted to call him back. He says, last night, I was at my home. It was midnight. My nephew comes by and says, what are you doing, Caesar? Are you divorcing your wife? What are you doing? I said, no, I'm not divorcing my wife. What do you need? You need money? What do you, what, what do you need? How much do you need? Nobody does this. Nobody is in America and just goes back. What do you need? This is a nephew talk. Midnight, just 12 hours ago. It's like, no. We've been called there. And then his nephew says these words. Is brother Hank, he, is he involved in this? I don't know what he meant by that. And Caesar says, yeah, he is. I'm the only one that's telling him, yes, go, go. Don't listen to what your family's telling you. That's a lie. God has told you to do what you need to do. He's spoken to you for many years. It's time to go. Action. And he says, I told my nephew, my dad labored in Guatemala. He died there preaching the gospel. And I'm going to do the same thing. Wow. Man. Honor your father and mother. sending his wife and kids ahead. It might be a year or something before he makes it over there. But we're going to preach the gospel together with Caesar in Guatemala. It's not easy. There's sacrifices. There's always sacrifices. But I tell you, if you're not going to live for God, it's going to be miserable at this end. You're going to be constantly running from him, constantly friction with him. He desires to give you what's best. He's your father. He knows everything. We know very little about our own children, amen? But our father in heaven knows everything about us, everything we need. 
and he wants to give it to us, but he can't give it to us unless we act in faith. How many of you will give your, you know, when you give your child a gift, and it's expensive, and you give it to them, and, and what do you expect from them? Not much. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's it. Those three words will melt your heart, won't they? You give me a very expensive gift. But if you give them that gift, and they're like, oh, cool, see ya. Oh, what happens in your heart then? <laughs> mm, nope. Not only are you not getting that gift, but you're not getting a lot of other things. <laughs> Our Father in Heaven isn't like that. But He cannot give us good things. If we're not asking for them, if we're not having the faith to step out and accept them. These are pretty extreme things. I'm not saying that everyone in this room is called overseas. I'm not saying that we're all called to go away from our family and make that ultimate sacrifice. But we all are called to reach those around us. We all are called to preach the gospel wherever we're at, to live it out. I'll finish up with this little testimony. I was at the park a couple weeks ago or a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Heather was actually over at the Logan Park with Gracie, and she saw this man come up on a bicycle and said, hey, you should go speak to him. He might be homeless. And so I'm fighting it, fighting it. Like, oh, I don't want to do this or that. And um, and I'm like, what, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? I rebuke you. Get off me. That is a lie. It's like, take action. Quit listening to the, you know, the, the enemy. <laughs> so I finally walk over there and start talking to this guy. And, and um, I'm talking probably for 10 minutes. And I'm looking for the, the opening to present the gospel. I'm looking for the common ground. I'm looking for all the things that you're taught. And my daughter comes over. And Gracie comes over. Six years old Gracie. Sits down. Within less than two minutes, she blurts out, hey, do you know Jesus? Is he in your heart? <laughs> out of the mouth of babies, I will proclaim praise. He will get praise. That is in the mouth of children. It's not that hard, but we make it a lot harder than it is. <laughs> it was great. He said, yes, I do know Jesus. <laughs> Are we living for him? Are we living for him? So church, I encourage you. Answer the call. What's your heavenly father telling you? What's he speaking to you? He's not done with you yet. You still got air in your lungs. He's not done with you. He has a calling. He has a gift for each and every one of us. Use them. Put them to use. Use it or lose it. Let's use it, church. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time together in, in your presence. And Lord, we just ask that we'll be able to go forth from this place and, and just have a boldness to share your love with the lost, the hurting, the broken. Lord, we just lift up each and every one in this room that, that's going through trials and, and tribulations that have lost loved ones, that have lost their, their mother and their father. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to comfort them right now. You are the comforter. You will, you will bring everybody's needs to the feet of Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you will bring your comfort over this place and over each and every one of us. Father, we thank you that you're so good. You're so good to us. And Lord, we just, we want to glorify you. And we do that today on this, this day in America where we celebrate earthly fathers. Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor. For it's yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name, amen.